Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist, which is one reason I love checking out Jeff Castellucci's music so much. Today, as I've just said, we're going to be checking out Jeff Castellucci, his cover of Blackbird by the Beatles. I heard this song a while back when it came out and people have been requesting ever since for like two years for me to make a video on it. So I'm going to call this one a vocal analysis instead of a first time reaction. Uh, and this will be an analysis, guys, so I will be pausing to talk about the vocal technique, about the musicality, other artistic choices Jeff is making with this cover he is doing. Um, that's what I do here. So that's what we're doing. Guys, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment for the algorithm. It could literally just be saying, Hi, Peter, or I love Jeff, or Jeff rules. Anything of that sort is totally acceptable. Helps the algorithm all the same. And if I am enhancing your listening experience, if you are finding yourself enjoying the music more, if you are learning things, that is the goal here. And if you find yourself in that situation, please do consider donating to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Link is in the description below. That is great for you, greatly helpful to support me as a young artist, a young singer, and a young creator. And without further ado, let's dive into Jeff Castellucci's Blackbird. major. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to really beautiful um starts off really subtle and then jeff always 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 prioritizing the legatissimo line smooth singing um his diction is more relaxed this allows him to keep a a cleaner flow of sound that doesn't get chopped up by consonants jeff opts for the sound he also opts for a little bit of a forward placement unless he's going for the low bass notes in which case then he really opens up his pharynx by dropping his larynx and it creates this very dark like almost freakish sound especially for jeff because he has such a low voice but when he's when he's in his middle to upper range he opts for a more forward sound a little bit of nasality it doesn't bother me some people think it's too nasal i think he's just opting for that to use that as a mechanism to have more air flowing through consistently and I think it works really nicely for him. So let's just go back and break down. Gosh, my arm is doing awkward stuff as I'm dodging where my uh, <laughs> filter is hooked onto the desk. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, let's run this back. Mm, so he starts on an E2. Blackbird. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. It's just very smooth. It's, he's allowing it to be breathy. There's no compression to the sound. There's no pressure to the sound. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. Take these, take these, take these. So he's just, he keeps going back down to this E2, which for Jeff, you know, super, super comfy. These broken wings and learn to fly. Fly, so that you can you can hear a little bit of that. If you were to take the nasality further, fly, but he's keeping it like fly instead of like fly would be less nasality and more laryngeal droppage, more pharyngeal space. But he's kind of right there in the middle, just just ever so slightly leaning leaning away from neutral and towards nasality. Take these broken wings and learn to fly. Fly. So just, 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 a, just a, a few percentage points of nasality in there, but again, I think it optimizes his flow of sound. All your life, you were only waiting for this moment to arrive. And then we 
get all the other Jeffs coming in to join. Your lie. Oh, your life. Oh, oh, your life. Bring that C sharp to B suspension there. I love, I love a little crunch in a sound, you know. This next one here. You were only waiting for, for those two pitches. Back to piano. I want to reiterate. I think it was really smart for Jeff to break away from acapella with these covers. Um, it 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 by definition makes the audience wider and he's already doing acapella stuff with voice play i think it was a very smart business move for him whether it was purely business or he just likes these kinds of covers or what i think it was a good play for him to branch away from just purely acapella and bring in instruments oh b1 chest Singing in the dead of night mm. Take these sucking eyes and learn to see Yes, okay. Then we have we have tenor Jeff. Singing in Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Mm, dead of night night. So he's still, still, you guys like that voice crack? Hell yeah. He's still keeping it in chest voice. It's like a heady sound, but it's still connected to his chest voice, as opposed to blackbird singing in the dead of night. Flipping up. He doesn't quite flip up. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. night. He's keeping it in his chest voice. Oh, just up to a a B, just a B three. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. So he's very relaxed on the diction. Take these sunken eyes. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see. All optimization of flow. be an A1. Yep, A1 from Jeff there in chest voice, of course. I do not have that in chest. Only on rare, rare occasions do I have that in chest. And very simple background harmonies, which is good. Although he did put that... Um, that crunch in there earlier, whatever it was, but for the most part, very simple and and ugh, I'd, I'd have to go back and check. It feels like he's been opting for vowels, especially like ooh, because ooh is a very it's a vowel that blends very easily. If you have a bunch of voices on ooh, just based on the structure of the overtones that that vowel produces. Um, it blends well. It's an easy vowel to blend, so it works really well if you're trying to keep a mellow vibe in a choral piece or an acapella piece or instrumental cover plus layered harmonies. Oohs work really well. Mmms, oohs. Pretty much the more open the vowel gets, mm -ah, the harder it gets to balance properly. So keeping to oohs is a smart play if you're just going for blend and kind of yeah, that kind of beautiful, mellow sound he's got going on here. It matches the piano timbre as well. The piano is very mellowed out. So even those ahs are really like, uh, so the mouth is still almost closed. So again, that's going to blend easier than ha, uh, ha. Uh, Ooh, mm, like the ha uh, is closer to an ooh than an ha, uh, you know? So pay attention to that. 
just opting to even even a even a more open valve naturally he's opting to shut it down a bit for i believe blending purposes another b1 chest okay a little stack there Tonic fifth tonic stack. Oh, don't you give me that Aeolian cadence. Mm. Uh, so flat, a major flat seven in this E. So we have E major. Also forgive, forgive the, the hands on this tiny iPad keyboard. I will butcher notes and chords all the time. If E major and it goes. So that'd be a f major flat seven in this key of E major, I believe. Or was it dominant? No, dominant, dominant. So I think that's what it was. It was an E major with a D stacked on top, which would be a, a dominant seven chord. So they're still on the E. Into the light of a dark black night. In a huge slide there up there, which to be honest sounds a little out of place in this song, a slide that aggressive. In in it's like a two octave slide out of vocal fry. Ooze again, keeping it very mellow. So that's cool. That's like kind of a, a totally new section here. So we've got like this with all these vowels changing. We've got melodies going up and down. Still a lot of ums and then like one voice on again that kind of that kind of muted ah. I like that. Another stack. Fly, 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 fly. So we have. B3, E4, F sharp 4. Black bird fly. Fly, fly, fly. Black bird fly. Into the light of a dark black night. I like that a lot. That, he, that sounds really nice. In, in. Nice E4. Which is high in chest voice for a bass. Objectively. In, in, in. He's like a glottal, a glottal, a glottal attack to get those vocal folds nice and closed. In, in. Into the light of a dark black night. And it comes all the way back. So at the start of that phrase, really tight vocal fold closure, and then relaxes it a bunch by the end. Into the light of a dark black night. So it starts out really, uh, and then comes back to, uh, by the end of a phrase. So that's a nice, really nice contrast he shows there. And singing that high does usually require a little bit of that. Into the light of a dark black night. The voice naturally has to kind of tighten up when you get up high in the chest range. 
You guys know how much I love Jeff's low notes, and I love his freaky, over darkened beast low notes, and I also really love his ne like purely natural breathy low notes, like this low A that he just did. Sounds so good. good as I to see. See. got a lot of repetition basically in all the different voice parts kind of taking the lead here for a second and it's just cool to hear him jumping around in registration Only waiting for this moment to be free 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 down to a B B1 chest Only waiting for this moment to so that's kind of baritone up to tenor Quick jump up to tenor. To be free. Black bird. Black bird. So those are A f high A's, A fours. In a head voice falsetto we kind of space there. Well supported, but clearly not chest voice. Up to a B4. Another A. Of a dark black. Okay, I'm obviously going to give him pit, pit vibers, and then I'll tell you what I think of it. <laughs> because it, it deserves pits. Of a dark black night. Okay, okay, you won sub there in the evening. Pat myself on the back, and now I'll let Jeff sing it. Dark black let's get a de let's get a debate going in the comment section so my my take on that e1 is it sounds great it's a perfectly produced first subharmonic and Jeff is like one of one of the OGs to really use subharmonics a lot in this realm and to use them well. So it sounds, the note itself sounds great. It's a well produced note. To me, I found it to be unnecessary at the end of this piece. I found, I, I don't think it, it doesn't seem like it serves the music so much as shows off a really low note. Um, so what, I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. That, that's my take. I would have been perfectly pleased if he had ended on an E2 or even higher in the lead voice. Um, the E1, although, like I said, perfectly produced, sounds wonderful, kind of in a vacuum or another, like at the end of Oogie Boogie, absolutely incredible. It just felt unnecessary for me at the end of this piece. Just an opinion. Just an opinion. You guys know how much I love and respect Jeff. Um, anyway, guys, this was my vocal analysis and kind of like a reaction to Blackbird because I hadn't seen it in two years since whenever it came out. 
always a pleasure listening to Jeff. Um, you guys have seen on my channel, I'm diversifying the portfolio a little bit, branching out into some other artists that people have been recommending for a while. Um, but I'm always going to come back to my roots here. You know, Jeff was my, his Misty Mountains is my first reaction I ever did when I was planning to start doing them. The only one I did before that was for Bass Gang's Bury a Friend, just because Bobby wanted us to do it. Um, but Jeff is kind of where this journey got started for me. So I love Jeff. I will always support him. I, I am a, a patron of his and, um, I, I think he deserves all the success he's found and I will keep coming back and doing videos like this, even though, you know, they're not as popular as when I cover like a So Hyung or a Forestella or, um, lately a Morissette. Um, but I love Jeff and I think he deserves again, all the credit and all the attention that he gets. And I really do enjoy listening to him, and I really enjoy analyzing his voice because I think he has a fascinating instrument. Um, anyway, that's it, guys. Please do like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment if you love Jeff's low notes and get that debate started. I want to see some heat down there. Was it necessary? Was it not? What do you think? Um, and, of course, please do consider joining my Patreon. Go check out the tiers. There are six tiers on my Patreon with varying levels of benefits starting at $1 a month all the way up to $100 a month um, for extra awesome, super califragilistic stuff. Yeah. So go check that out, guys. I'll see you the next one. Peace.